Okay, so you may have seen a teaser for this unit. This is a Packard Bell solid state AM FM console stereo that a customer dropped off to me to get looked at. Here's the problem. You hear the hum? But, but it does work. It's just got a hum in the background. That's all. Well, let's go ahead and pull the back on this thing and see what's inside. Okay, so here is the back of the unit. And this whole back piece is going to have to come off to gain access to it. There's the model serial tag on it. RPC46 scan. Looks like that's the model. Hard to tell. 110, 120 AC, 60 cycles, 125 watts. Anyhow, you can kind of take a look down in there. There's some speaker jacks and tape inputs and outputs and a headphone jack, if necessary. A little circuit breaker down in there. Okay, let's go ahead and get the back off of this thing. Well, everyone's checking this out. Got one of the cats over here looking at it. The dog's not that afraid of it at this point. Check out the speakers in here. Looks like someone's replaced one of these speakers at some time. Oxford Transducer Company from Chicago. 8 ohms, 12 watt. Look at that speaker. Look at that. It's got a horn up in there. Mid-range. Man, this thing... They don't make them like this anymore. Let's go ahead and check out the other side. This side, I believe, has the original speaker still in it with the mid-range and the horn up there and a 10 microfarad 50 volt non-polar. It's got two positives on it right there. So it's a non-polarized capacitor. Look at this thing. I bet it sounds great when it's working good. There's the power amplifier. I suspect one of these two large filter caps, or even both of them, are bad. And then here's the AM FM and the preamp portion of it. Big old, look at the size of that AM ferrite rod antenna. Man, this thing actually picked up some AM stations, even with the hum. It still did really good. Well, I'll ask the customer what he wants to do, but let's go ahead and pull the power amplifier unit out of this and uh, check those capacitors right there and see how they test. I wonder if we can get any numbers off of them right here. 1500 at 50 and 500 at 50. And then this one over here, 1500 at 50. Well, let's go ahead and pull the power amp out first because I suspect that that is where the problem is going to be. Now uh, there's a tag on the speaker, California Radio and TV, $12.95 for that replacement speaker. Okay, well there is the little tag on the power amplifier module telling you what the inputs and outputs are, what the transistor numbers are in the unit. Alright, so there is a view of the top of the unit with the two large filter capacitors here. Well, there is a view of the bottom of the unit. So here's the four bridge rectifier diodes, individual diodes to make up a full wave bridge. This is one channel power amplifier. This is the other channel power amplifier. And I got to believe that this is the preamp circuitry in here. And then these are probably, most likely the output coupling transformers, possibly input coupling, I'm not sure. Although the speaker terminal right here on this channel does connect directly to this terminal which connects to the one emitter resistor and then power is supplied here. I don't have a schematic available on this unit. I haven't looked for one yet, but I probably could find one if necessary. So anyhow, let's get the ESR meter out and we'll ESR these main filter caps as well as the small capacitors in here and just see what shape they're in. Okay, ESR meter out. First thing, lead integrity. Make sure we're close to zero. Yeah, it's like right on zero, absolutely perfect. So I assume this lead right here goes to this large solder blob, which is chassis ground. So I'm just going to go ahead and put one lead on chassis ground. 
and that one is absolutely terrible. That one is actually good. Wow, zero ohms. And this other capacitor right here, absolutely terrible. So at a minimum, we're gonna to need to replace both of these filter caps. This one goes to chassis ground, so I can probe it here. Good shape. Yeah, bad, bad, bad. Wow, that one tests good, bad. That one actually tests good. And that one tests pretty good. These are 50 microfarad capacitors. Looks like these are 100 microfarad capacitors, so. Yeah, definitely bad. But this one on the other hand, it's about two and a half ohms. Not too terribly bad for the age. I mean, this thing is like 50, 54, 55 years old. I believe he said that it was manufactured in 1965. So to start with, I'll go ahead and get the customer an estimate to replace probably every capacitor in the power amp circuit. I'll ask him if he wants to proceed with testing the capacitors in the radio, although the radio did seem to work quite well. But we'll see what he wants to do and probably have to get some capacitors on order, especially the axial lead capacitors. They're not used hardly anymore. I can probably go ahead and replace them with standard radio lead common capacitors, but I'll ask him what he wants to do. He may want to keep it uh, as pure as possible. So I'll go ahead and get all the values, get an estimate made up and contact the customer. Okay, so I do have speakers connected right now and I do have an audio source going into it. So let's go ahead and power the unit on, on the bench. And definitely does have a hum going on. So let's go ahead and set up a voltmeter and I'll just measure on AC volts from chassis ground and see what we get on these capacitors. 0.14 volts, that's not bad at all. That one's not bad, 0.15 volts. 12 volts AC ripple on that capacitor. That is probably the main culprit. So if I go to DC volts, what kind of DC voltage do we have? 26, and we should have negative, negative 30 on that one, and negative 39 on that one. So if I can find a thousand microfarad capacitor at 50 volts, let's just go ahead and tack it on that and see if we can get rid of that hum and make sure the amplifier sounds acceptable before I go any further. Well, you might remember this Nichicon 1000 microfarad 50 volt capacitor from a previous video, the MK subwoofer repair. I tacked it across the big, I think it was a 7200 microfarad capacitor that had failed and it got rid of the hum. So we're gonna go ahead and put it across this capacitor right here and see if it corrects the hum situation. Okay, it is tacked in place. Let's go ahead and give it some power now. Wow, still got a hum, not as bad. Let's go ahead and measure the voltage on this capacitor at this point. So now we have 39 volts of DC and 0.19 volts of ripple. Well, let's go ahead and I have another thousand at 50. We'll tack it in there real quick and see what happens. All right, installed. So let's power it up one more time, see what happens. Oh, listen to that. No hum. Let's get some audio into this thing. Well, it's working. It's playing audio. It sounds pretty darn good for a 50 plus year old unit. Definitely gonna need some caps changed in the preamp because there's a definite balance issue between the two channels. One channel is much louder than the other channel is. So that is just the left channel running. And that's the right channel. So I think it's gonna need a complete refill on capacitors. Okay, here we are a few days later and some parts have arrived. I've got some Axial Lead electrolytics and then I've got some 1500s at 50 radio lead electrolytics and some 470s at 50. So we're gonna go ahead and replace. This one's got a 500 at 50 and a 1500 at 50. 
This one is a 1500 at 50. Now this one is a positive ground, so we'll have to make sure we attach the positive lead to the chassis ground. So for aesthetics purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and leave these two large capacitors mounted on the top of the chassis so it looks like nothing's ever been done. And we'll just go ahead and mount the capacitors physically underneath here because they're, they're very small capacitors. I can just lay them down as necessary. I will clip the leads so they're not electrically connected to the original electrolytic capacitors because I don't want these things to develop leakage and grenade later in life. I'm just gonna go ahead and time-lapse everything that I'm gonna do. I did create a roadmap that shows me where everything needs to go and the polarity of all the capacitors, as you can see right there. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started.
Okay, so all of the capacitors have been replaced and none of the original large electrolytics are still connected. I went ahead and sliced the traces, mounted the new caps so they're up off the chassis. And I think we just need to go ahead and power this thing up right now. And we'll give it a test. Just make sure everything works okay. There we go. Everything looks really good. These didn't turn out quite as good as I'd hoped for, but I think it's going to work. I went ahead and zip tied that one to the AC cord coming in so it's not going to flop around. That little one's not going to be a problem. This one right there, that one does go to chassis ground, so even if it touches, it'll be okay. Once again, everything is stood up. All the original leads to the capacitors have been clipped, and they're stood up out of the way. Once again, I went ahead and left the original large capacitors up here just for aesthetic purposes. So everything looks good. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see what happens. Power on. Nope, no hum. Let's feed some audio into it and see what it sounds like. Well, I'll tell you what, for 1965, actually sounds pretty darn good. So next, we'll go ahead and put it back in the cabinet, feed some more audio into it, and see what those big speakers sound like. Okay, so I have the amplifier mounted back in the cabinet. Now I don't have the radio connected at this point. I'm just gonna go ahead and feed it some audio from my little MP3 player right here. Okay, here we go, power on. And then I'll hit play over here. Okay, next I go ahead and get the uh, radio connected back up to it, make sure that it works okay with no hum. Well, I, I don't have copyright free audio going into it right now, but I do have a station tuned in, and it does play. Here it is, 55 years old, plus, still working great. I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the Packard Bell console stereo. Now, the customer didn't ask me to check out the turntable, but it does move very freely, so I have a suspicion it's probably going to work, but if he wants, I will go ahead and check it out. So I just need to go ahead and get the back put on it here, sitting up against the wall, and finish getting this thing all put back together. Contact my customer and have him come down and pick this thing up. So, yeah, working great. There it is. Once again, hopefully you enjoyed the video on the repair of the 1965 Packard Bell Stereo. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. While you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, once again, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.